All right. Uh, thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining in. Um, and we'll straight move to the next slide. Um, why, why we are doing the webinar? Um, essentially, why CN Beyond is doing the webinar is to increase your awareness. So a lot of persons may not know about a um, very renowned logistics supply chain port management course, which is being delivered from one of the top universities in the world, right? And a lot of persons who even know about this kind of course, they may hear it from a friend of a friend of a friend, right? So while doing this webinar, uh, our in intention, our motive is to increase your awareness, um, provide you consolidated information from credible sources. So which means that it's not coming from Sissy and beyond, right? And it's not coming from a friend of a friend. It's coming directly from uh, the, the university itself. It's coming directly from the director of the course, uh, right? So it's coming directly from the recruitment managers, international or within India. What happens uh, when you, you have this information, you are able to evaluate its uh, relevance uh, for yourselves, right? So everyone has, has, has different motivation to do a particular course. Whether it is right for you or not, um, you will be able to evaluate. Finally, you should be able to take a well-informed decision, right? So that's the reason why we are doing this uh, webinar for, for all of our audience. Um, and a couple of do's and don'ts uh, uh, in between the webinar. Um, uh, let, let's have the speakers uh, speak. Um, we can we communicate through the chat windows uh, 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 during the webinar. If we have any questions, we can just put it in the chat window. Um, as I requested earlier, uh, if you can rename yourself to your name uh, rather than the name of your device or maybe name of your family member. And you can keep on submitting questions after each slide, but uh, we might take questions at the end of the uh, session itself. Um, all right. And uh, yeah, um, so feel free to ask questions uh, at the end of the slide. We will share the presentation as well uh, later on with all of you as well. Um, right, so that's pretty much from uh, uh, C and beyond. And uh, maybe we'll have, uh, 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 would it be Dr. Moiser who would uh, share your screen and would, would you be talking about the course? Or would it be Nikolai? Uh, I think that uh, maybe Nicholas can uh, do the presentation, yeah, yeah, right? Please. Yeah, yeah, well, I will share my screen. Yes. All right. Thank you. Okay. Can you can you enable the the screen sharing, please? Oh. Okay. It should be it should be okay now. Be. Yeah, it is. So. Can you can you see it? Yes. Okay. Yes. Perfect. So, so, uh, so Nicola is the course director along with uh, Dr. Moiser. And uh, yep. you will take us about the, you'll tell us more about the course and uh, about the entry requirements, about visas, about, uh, you know, all the other related recruitment related things. Uh, we yes. have uh, uh, Lawrence and Ria with us who would you know, advise on that. Yeah, over to you, Nicola. Thank you. Yeah, so I uh, will uh, introduce uh, ourselves with Moisir and I, and then I will uh, go deeper into the, the program presentation of uh, supply chain management and international logistics and port management programs. Uh, and then I will uh, also um, tell the um, what the, the students can expect in terms of job positions and salaries, because it's important to see after the school what they can expect what they can do all right so thank you for attending this uh this meeting this webinar so uh we'll let moasir introduce himself first and i will uh do it uh, after him sure thank you very much nicholas uh, i am uh uh, I've been a professor, a full professor in supply chain management and logistics uh, since 2004, so 20 years. I was uh, working for university, Federal University of São Carlos in Brazil, and I moved for uh, from there to uh, Normandy last uh, August, last year. 
and then I assumed the position of director of uh, the programs together with Nicholas. Uh, I was also uh, a professor, a visiting professor in some schools in the United States in, within the uh, supply chain management area, for instance, North Carolina State University, University of Wisconsin Madison, Northwestern University. I've been a supervisor for MSc and PhD students in Brazil and uh, in other countries for the last 15 years. Uh, I'm a bachelor's uh, in industrial engineering and also master's and PhD in industrial engineering from the uh, Federal University of São Carlos. Uh, okay, uh, Nicholas, I think that you can uh, yeah. go ahead. You must see it. So for me, I'm a, I'm a former <laughs> student of the school. I'm a graduate from Yem uh 11 years ago already. And um, yeah, I'm a professor in supply chain management since 2016 at school. And I was external teacher until 2021. And uh, since then I'm um, academic director of the, of the of both programs, uh, as Moasi explained. But I'm also um, keeping other job position outside the school. Um, so I'm consultant in port and flow management, specializing in uh, safety and security uh, compliance. And I'm also maritime safety and security trainer for a, a French company that is uh, delivering uh, courses, uh, continuous um, trainings um, for, comp for shipping companies and for port companies in France and in Africa. <clears throat> So the other teachers, other professors of this program will be also international. Um, they are mainly uh, internal teachers, but we have also external ones. The, the, the ratio is 65% uh, of internal teachers that are uh, all the PhDs and 35% uh, of external teachers that are working for uh, supply chain or transport companies. So you can see that the countries and uh, all of these people will be at school physically uh, in France to deliver the courses. <clears throat> so all continents are represented. About the student profiles, uh, just to give you an idea of what we, we have, uh, it's an average of the, the, the last three years now. Um, so this is the, um, the ratio uh, according to each continent. Um, so for the main, the main um, students are coming from Asia, mainly from India, China, and uh, Sri Lanka. And then it's Europe. So some French students, some uh, uh, also uh, Eastern European country students, Africa and South America. Not, we don't have any American so far, USA, but uh, we are hoping for. Um, about the, the graduation, so for you guys that are attending this, this uh, webinar, it will be, uh, I think, a Master of Science only. Uh, Ria, I think so. Yes. Yes, yes, so, yes, yes, yes. But we, within this, this program, you will be... Uh, let's say, uh, blended with other pro student profiles, uh, including students that are already attending a master one this year in EM Normandy, that's the first. And then with uh, students are, that are um, from uh, partners universities, so linked to EM Normandy, but abroad, incoming student. Will be, they would be here for one semester or two semesters and the master of science. So from other universities or from, uh, uh, let's say individuals that are graduated from a bachelor degree with three years of work experience or um, a master one degree. So about the calendar, just to give you an idea. So this is a full, time program so from september to april for the courses and then from april to december for the internship and also to finalize the thesis but i will explain it further 
just uh, in a few minutes. So yeah, the we always start, let's say in mid-September. The first semester will go until the end of December. And then we start uh, after the, the Christmas holidays in January until April. That's for the second semester. And then you can start your internship. So it's uh, for MSc students, it's uh, four months minimum. You are a master two, it's six months. <clears throat> so you have the, the different colors that are corresponding to different type of things. So the yellow are for the lectures. You have challenge, but challenge I will I will explain it also after the receipt in case of and holidays. So the program structure. So like we explained during our presentation, we are uh, managing uh, two programs, the supply chain management program and the international logistics and port management programs. The thing is in the first semester, we think that the, the students should have the, the fundamentals of supply chain transportation operation management. So they have to be together. LPM and SCM students together. They have subgroups, but they will they will follow the same uh, course structure, the same course sequence. And then in the and then in the spring semester, they will be split according to the, the track or the option they selected. So supply chain on one side and uh, port management on the other side. You have the, the ratio, normally 60% uh, of the students go to a supply chain and 40% go to uh, port management and international logistics, okay? So the, the, the average of students is between 40 and 60 on average. Um, so yeah, in detail now, to go deeper, uh, the, the fall semester, like I said, it's a, it is a common trunk and the objectives are to familiarize the students to, to uh, main logistics, the, the, the basics of logistics, to supply chain functions, to operation, to process mapping, in order for them to have the same level at the end of the first semester so they can attend more specialized and more difficult courses in the second semester. So oh, this is the um, the structure for the first semester. So you have on the left side the name of the course. You have in the middle the name of the sub courses, number of hours, and number of ECTS credits to validate for each course. So the sequence will be it will be the, the this one. I mean, you will start by supply chain essentials. Uh, inside this course, you will have to uh, understand the main aspect of supply chain and logistics activities. You will learn how to draw um, flow charts okay, for process mapping, for quality management uh, uh, objectives. You have some uh, course of, on softwares also. So on Excel, because you will use Excel very often during the, the other courses uh, with uh, data, man, data ana analyze, analysis, sorry. So you will have a course at the, at the beginning of the semester to, to put every, everyone on the same level, the okay? Operation, operational level. Also the SAP, because we, we have a lot of um, graduate students that are using SAP just right after during it, the internship or during the, their, their job. So the, the school um, the, the, has decided to, to in, introduce SAP to the students so they can master it, so they can put it on their resume so this, the, the company can see that our students have a competitive advantage on, on that. Because you, you have this course in the first semester and also uh, in the second semester. <clears throat> so that's for the first course. Then in the, the next one is operations and quality management. So maybe Moisir can uh, just uh, give a few words about it. You, you might, Profond Moisir. Yes. Yes. Uh, 
about the the, the course, uh, the, the the what what do you think that I should? Uh, uh, the main the main the main aspect of what they will uh, see with you during this course, uh, what type of uh, uh, chapters and our key key aspects. Yes, I think that uh, the basics of operations management. I, mean, I think that all uh, activities that we do in our uh, Nowadays, activities are uh, can be classified as operations. So uh, we try to study uh, uh, how to manage these operations, uh, not only industrial operation, but of course all uh, supply operations, and also in total quality management, we deal with uh, <clears throat> all the aspects of quality in product, quality in process, and so on. I think that all of these uh, courses are intended to uh, to the students uh, can have a, a total understanding of the role of operations management, total quality management within supply chain, right? Because uh, all of the companies nowadays uh, should be aware of the importance of being connected. Uh, I think that's it, right? Yeah. That's Thank good. you, Marcia. Thank you. So the, the next uh, the next course is about procurement and also about data management. Uh, so you will learn how to deal with supplier relationship management with the strategic procurement. So how to choose a, a supplier, how to rate a supplier, and how to maintain a relation with them. Um, then supply chain analytics is about uh, it's about figures about data how to, to deal with data and uh, all the also all the software that you can use for that so OBI something like like this so you will have to um, to use a lot of uh, data during other courses so we we are uh, I think in line with what the also the professional world the companies are expecting. Um, from the students to have it in terms of knowledge and skills um, at the end of the, the year. Also, uh, cost and revenue, so to calculate the cost uh, to maintain benefits, and uh, that's the cost and revenue management course. <clears throat> and the last uh, main course is about sustainability applied to supply chain management, so two different courses. The first is responsible and competitive supply chain management. Um, within this course, you will learn how to um, design, how to um, assemble and distribute a product according to different constraints linked to sustainability. And the low carbon logistics uh, will be about how to calculate the carbon footprint company how to reduce this carbon footprint thanks to different techniques, and also how to manage the waste that a company, a business company, uh, is uh, generating on a daily basis, and how to reduce also this amount of waste and to create some cyclical uh, flows instead of uh, one-way flow. That's for the courses. Then you have other things. Uh, at the bottom of this page, that hard the challenge. So we are in a full-time uh, program, like I mentioned, but we are also um, offering some professional experience. That's the challenge. So in school, we find companies that struggle, let's say, to uh, to answer to different logistics issues that they are facing on a daily basis. So they, they will... Uh, offer this question to the school and the school can offer it to the students but then you will work in group of three or four students on average and you will be um, competing with other groups and the best group will have a best grade and also a reward that's for the challenge so you have this challenge in the first semester two weeks and also in the second semester two more weeks but with the same company and the same groups then you have career path. So for MSc students, uh, will be not three hours, but nine hours, uh, because we think that you are, were not at school before. So you need to learn about the, the French market or the European market maybe. So you will have more hours dedicated to the career preparation. So uh, you can be uh, fully ready for, for looking for an internship. And then the research methodology 
it's for the thesis because you will have a thesis to to submit at the end of the second semester. So that's the preparation for this uh, thesis. So uh, this course will give you the, the main aspects and how to 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 uh, write it. Let's say to deal with methodology, uh, of the research methodology um, uh, techniques also. And uh, yeah, that's for it. That's for the second. That's, that's for the first semester. Then the spring, so um, supply chain management track will be uh, for students that are looking for, um, let's say, supply chain management job position, or even I will give you a list of uh, job positions after, but uh, buyer, um, supply chain coordinator, uh, et cetera, or warehouse management also. That's the program here. You have uh, also different uh, courses inside. You have different sub courses. So you will have to deal with international trades to legal aspects, even if it's supply chain, even if it's, even if it's uh, warehouse management, uh, job position that you will uh, do after. That's useful for the global, um, uh, let's say, global vision of the world sector. Multimodal transport, how to deal with transportation and uh, constraints, transportation, uh, different type of transportation that will choose the right one according to different uh, objectives, including sustainability. The main uh, course inside this second semester is the demand and supply planning. Um, so how to deal with supplier, how to deal with the demand with the customer. Uh, I don't know if most here you have something to say about it. It's more your your feel. Yes, yes, yes. I think that uh, this uh, course explore uh, the both sides of supply chain. So demand planning, forecasting, and uh, also supply planning and how to deal with suppliers and uh, purchasing and other activities within uh, supply and also the activities concerning demand management and demand planning. I think that uh, both courses are a combination of uh, qualitative and also some quantitative models to deal with uh, these activities. Mm. That's good. Okay. Then it's about innovation. So uh, first is warehousing and distribution. How to apply new techniques to manage warehouse uh, efficiently and distribution also such as cross docking, uh, co-packing, uh, kitting, et cetera, techniques that are really new, that are the best one today. So you will learn a lot of uh, new things in this course. And digitalization and supply chain is to link new technologies such as the internet of things, blockchain, big data, um, et cetera, to supply chain and how to use it to manage properly this, the world supply chain. All right, and then you have digital supply chain project. So uh, it will be about, it will be more practical uh, courses. You, the students will learn by doing themselves. So it's about group projects, simulation, serious games on supply chain uh, topics, okay? Including SAP, like I already mentioned. Uh, maybe uh, Moacir, you can give us uh, just a few words about the expert systems in supply chain, what we want to, to, to introduce in this course. Yes, uh, I think that there are a lot of uh, activities within supply chain, like for instance, routing and demand planning, a lot of activities uh, within supply chain. Nowadays, they are uh, uh, performed by systems, by softwares, specialized softwares. So this course is intended to uh, explain to students what uh, go inside these softwares, you know, what kind of mathematical modeling and how these work. Of course, that uh, a specialization on these will demand a lot, a lot more hours, but it's just for the student to, to know what is inside this thing, you know, let's have a simple example, for instance, a routing software that we all uh use in our uh, our day our daily daily lives 
uh, uh, use uh, routing, uh, mathematical modeling, and something like that. So uh, the students need to understand uh, the basics of these systems. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, then the uh, the next course is not about supply chain. It's about you guys. It's about how to maintain or to develop your soft skills in order to be a comfortable uh, during the job interviews and uh, during your job position. So you have a course on negotiation and uh, professional technique to succeed during the job interview and on conflict management, conflict, uh, understand social conflict. When you will be maybe junior manager, for, for sure you will deal with uh, some social conflict between you or the employees or between employees uh, together so this course will give you some uh, advice piece of advice how uh, to, to deal with it. okay next the challenge I already explained that is the second part of the challenge the career preparation is still the same as the first semester we keep some courses uh during the second one to you to, to uh, prepare yourself for the the the, the internship so internship like I said four months minimum and the final dissertation is the, the basis to submit, the final document to submit. All right. Then the LPM, so International Logistics and Port Management Option. Maybe we are more interested in for this one. So the objective is to train the students uh, so they can be able to handle, um, uh, to manage port and maritime operations. But you can also do other type of transport because we are also talking about other type of transport such as uh, air and rail and road transport. So that's uh, uh, also an option for you guys if you want to enlarge your vision on the transport. So it's for managing port operation, maritime operation, and transport facilities in general. Let's say. That's the problem. First courses are pretty the same as the, the SCM. So the main aspect of international trade, the main aspect of uh, legal aspects, but different topic. Even the course is the same as the, the SCM uh, track. The content will be different because we are, of course, in line with the, the, the objective of this option. So for instance, for legal aspects of logistics here, you should expect all the, the, the issues that can arise during the transport and what, what kind of issue can arise at the transport facility, so in the port, at the airport, so insurance, for instance, uh, in codems, uh, anything related to contracts, actually, uh, and also to customs. Then you have risk and security management and supply chain that will give you the 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 way to to calculate the risk because we can calculate the risk according to probab probability uh, vulnerability and impact so you will learn how to deal with this how to to make a risk management analysis um then you have the transport modes course uh so we have a dedicated course on maritime and another course on multimodal so for air road and uh, rail transportation then you have shipping and port management so port logistics and community so how to manage a port terminal how to manage a port in general if you're working for the port authority what kind of stakeholders uh what kind of uh, financial aspects what these people have what shipping company Shipping companies have to pay when they come at port their vessels, how to calculate it, to deal with land management within the port, and how to, to run the terminal and with which constraints, which type of stakeholder, uh, how to calculate um, timings of unloading and loading operations, how to, to make sure these timings are correct according to the stopover uh, schedule, etc. Then you have shipping business strategy. So that's more for people who want to work for uh, shipping companies uh, like big uh, container shipping companies. So how to run this kind of companies 
uh, how to develop uh, markets everywhere in the world for uh, this course. Then the rest will be about the same as the SCM, except for the data management for international transportation will be different from the, the SCM uh, because it will be how to deal with data uh, during the transportation. Uh, so you will have um, people from uh, software uh, design, people from operation, people from uh, legal that will give you courses that uh, will bring some uh, qualitative element during this course. You have also SAP because you can use SAP even in the transport and infrastructure. And then the soft skills, the business competition and the rest are the same as I already presented for the SCM because they are mandatory courses that are for every uh, master of science at school. All right. So if you are attending a master of science, you will have a little bit of more, um, a little bit more courses to attend compared to the master two student. We call it electives, okay? That will be courses at the end of the day, 2.5 hours, uh, let's say once a week. So you have one course to pick in the first semester and two courses to pick in the second semester among this list. Okay, you are free to choose uh, the one that you want. Uh, and uh, this will give you more uh, credits on the um, for the graduation so you can have a Master of Science degree at the end of the, the year. They are not necessarily related to logistics, but they are mandatory to attend if you are doing an, a Master of Science. The job market to finish. Um, so for, for both track, I took the, uh, the job position of our previous year group that they are doing now. Um, and I also will give you at the, the last page what my former classmates are doing 10 years later, because I already told you that I have, a, I was a student at, um, in this uh, program 10 years ago, so I can, I know what my former class, classmates are doing now. So for SCM, supply chain management track that's the the kind of job that you should expect just right after the the school so you can work as a buyer you can work as a continuous improvement project manager in supply chain uh you can be in the, the planning operation you can be in the demand also to deal with customer so most of our students even they are coming from uh asia for instance will work in europe so in France or let's say in Germany, Belgium or the Netherlands, mostly. Okay. Uh, so even if you are coming from abroad, you have opportunities to find jobs in Europe, not necessarily in France, but in other European countries. So you can see here the location. So Munich, Paris, Berlin, Brussels, etc. For the international logistics and port management, so let's say we have very uh, good reputation uh, for uh, shipping companies. So a lot of students are working for shipping companies such as CMS, CGM. Last year, they took uh, uh, five or six students uh, to their headquarters in Marseille. They took one in Beirut. They took one in Le Havre. That's uh, good. Also, MSC. Uh, uh, to uh, I think two students and other yeah will work for other type of companies not necessarily logistics companies but mostly to um, to coordinate transportation within these companies for instance uh, and you have here Johnson and Johnson transportation coordinator for them um, also Bolloré uh, for uh, shipping operation coordination etc. So the location are mainly close to ports or close to capitals, okay, where there is a lot of flows coming, incoming and outgoing. Uh, what my classmates are doing 10 years later, so you can see the, the difference between the, the, the job that you should expect just right after the school and the job that you should expect 10 years later. So you have the list here. This is uh, the main ones, okay, that I, that I, I'm aware of. So supply officer, project engineer, fleet manager, um, but in a higher level. 
and the the, uh, the salary, but I will give you in euros, sorry guys. Uh, but you can, if you have an idea of the dollars value, you can talk about the same. So it will be 65,000 euros per year as an average. Uh, right, so that's the for for the presentation. Um, I'm I'm done. That's all contact. If you want to contact us. Thank you so much, Nicola. Uh, I think we can now talk about the eligibility and the application process. Uh, so um, as far as uh, students here who are connected, I think a lot of you, as uh, Nicola mentioned, will be looking at the MSc. So we do offer the MSc in a one year and a two year track. Uh, usually, we recruit students for the uh, who have a three-year bachelor's degree for the two-year track, and those who have a four-year bachelor's degree for the one-year track. But this year, we do have an option of validating work experience. So, students with five years of work experience or more can be considered uh, for the one-year track. We are putting into place uh, a validation process through the application process itself. Uh, so this is something new, which we did not have last year. So uh, we would be able to recruit more uh, candidates like you, especially marinas, who usually come uh, to us with a BSc in uh, nautical sciences or marine sciences. Um, so as far as age is concerned, there's no bar. We do not have a restriction on age. Uh, but note that, of course, since you are participating in today's Sea and Beyond uh, webinar, uh, you uh, you will also get uh, an application fee waiver should you decide to apply to us and should you decide to apply to uh, C and Beyond as well. Uh, we do have a number of scholarships as well. We have two particular scholarships, the Achievement Scholarship uh, and the Early Bird Scholarship. So the Early Bird Scholarships are valid for those who submit an application by the end of February. And uh, the Achievement Scholarship is usually determined post your pre-admission. So there's no separate application process for that. You will fill up the questionnaire uh, in the application form. Some of the questions will pertain to the achievement scholarship. So there's no, uh, there's no dual process to follow in order to apply for these scholarships. Um, I think um, that's about it in terms of eligibility. I think Lawrence, Lawrence do you have anything else to add? Um, no, just um, I would like to give you a piece of advice in really fulfilling carefully your application, your letter of motivation, be prepared for the interview, be natural, show yourself as you are and don't pretend to be uh, someone else. And of course, if you would like to apply for the achievement scholarship, just don't say only because it happened, it happens sometimes. Uh, I think I deserve a scholarship. This is not an application for a scholarship. Um, be confident in yourself and uh, if you need some uh, help or advice to prepare your application file, we are here to help you as well. But be very cautious, so it's your application, it's really important. Um, this is the only piece of advice I would have. Yeah, in terms of uh, tuition as well, uh, the one-year program will be priced at around 16,500 euros, whereas the two-year program will be priced at 26,500 euros. Uh, I saw the question, so I thought it would be worth answering it right away. In terms of visa processing also, we do assist candidates in uh, completing their visa process. So we will do this hand in hand with uh, Gaurav from C and Beyond. And uh, we are in touch with the, the MEC and the campus trans offices. So we will definitely be able to assist you with your visa application process once you are admitted. Um, thanks, uh, Ria, Nicola, Lawrence, and Dr. Mercer for uh, the presentation on the course um, and the application process as well. So let me just quickly summarize uh, this uh, course in the next two, three minutes. And uh, please feel free to correct me. Um, so persons who are interested to get into supply chain management, port management, this is the course for you. If you have a three years degree and more than five years of work experience, you can get into a one year course. Uh, 
uh, or if you have a four year degree, you can get into a one year course. Howsoever, if you have a three year degree and less than five years of work experience, you get into a two year course. The course fee of for one year is 16,500. The course fee for two years is about 26,500. Right? So depending on where do you stand, you could choose one of these courses. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the post-study, uh, you, you get a one-year visa for the course or the duration of the course, you get a visa for either one year or two year. After you finish the course, you get two-year post-study work visa uh, as well. And typically that gets extended, right? Uh, it's one plus one. And, uh, and specifically nationals. Okay, great, great. So it's, it's, it's essentially one plus one year uh, um, this post-study work visa, right? Um, so your course is also divided into um, uh, various semesters and it includes internship. It includes a thesis as well. Um, what I also saw is that there is a fair bit of uh, uh, focus which is given on the digitization as well. Um, um, so which is the need of the R and which is what a lot of companies are also looking at and they would like to recruit on it. And especially what I saw the data analytics part as well. And good to see that you are also giving a, um, a training on Excel, so advanced Excel. So, um, and so you don't essentially need to be a techie to, and, and, and correct me if I am wrong, Nicola or, 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 or Dr. Mercer, that you don't need to be a techie to get into the data analytics uh, uh, courses. Uh, that's something to a business guy, uh, you, you, you can teach that as well. Uh, is, is that understanding correct? Yeah. All right, great, great. Um, fine. So I, I think that's uh, what I understood. And I'm sure there will be enough and more questions from the audience. But let me start with uh, a couple of questions from my end, please. Um, so I'm interested to get into the course, right? I'm, 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 I, I like the course. Now I'm confused um, 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 between supply chain or port management, right? To me, uh, both look uh, uh, great uh, courses. Um, what would be your suggestion? Uh, what kind of background uh, what uh, kind of experience uh, is more suited to probably a supply chain um, course and, and which is more suited to a port management one? I think it's more related to what you want to do after that what you've done before. Uh, because you can have a maritime experience, for instance, and Maybe you want to work for a company that's managing a warehouse. And that's not a problem. Because you will learn everything during this, this pro on, uh, during these two semesters. So that's more about what you want to, to become in terms of job position. If you want to do something related to supply chain in general, I mean, relation with suppliers, relation with customers, um analyzing the demand the forecast the operation and also to manage a warehouse and that's a supply chain track that you should uh, select if you want to manage transport hub if you want to work for a, a shipping company or inside a port or an airport then you should choose the rpm track yeah totally agree i think that uh is more general than uh, the national logistics and port management, you know, uh, port management, or it's a part of the distribution process within the supply chain. So uh, depends on uh, your final goal after graduation. Yes, I totally agree with Nicholas. Thanks. So if you want to be more specific, uh, you want uh, towards port management and a lot of people have that kind of background, uh, a lot of audience which are kind of uh, attending this, then if you want to be specific, then maybe go to port management. But if you really want to broaden, you know, your industries uh, uh, go, go a lot more wider, then supply chain is uh, much more uh, relevant for you. Understand. Yeah, not only production itself or industrial because uh, supply chain operations. So you can also work 
in uh, service industries and so on, something like that, you know, so uh, supply chain in the, not just industrial, but also all operations and service companies. Okay, sure. Makes sense. Thanks a lot. Um, right, fine. So I think there have been a few questions and uh, he has been kind to answer a few questions on the chat as well. So, oh, so I think uh, Rana Dev's question was on online course. It's a pure offline course. It's a full-time course. Um, a course fee we've already discussed, 16,500 and 26,500. Um, uh, Post-study work visa, which we have uh, discussed, region wise or time period wise it's a time period wise uh, which you have uh, probably answered um right so sunil is saying it's the uh, you already answered uh, ria um okay um, uh, any further questions which the audience might have otherwise i i probably have a couple of more questions uh and, and uh, what's the um, I mean, um, um, I, I so so I understand that within the course, the students probably uh, have might be one year experience, uh, uh, or they might have been 10, 15 years of work experience. So, what is the typical age, um, say, in the course, and what's the typical work experience if, uh, in in a typical batch? If if you may tell me. Um, about the age, uh, we have students between uh, 22 years old and 30, 31. Sometimes we have some very, let's say 1%, we have more than 35 years old, uh, but there is no issue for integration. I mean, uh, they were working groups many very often. And then I, according to what I, I've seen for four years now, it's not an issue to work with younger or older people because they are all interested in the same topics, same subjects. And uh, and I think it is very interesting to 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 deal with this different age, status, uh, origin, because each one will bring something that is different from what the other are, are bringing. So, um, so the age is not an issue. And... Um, what was the second question? Sorry. Yeah, no, is there age and experience? So if experience, yeah, sorry. Oh, experience, yeah. For instance, this year we have one student who has a, a lot of experience in the in the how to to manage a terminal because he he already um, did some some jobs related to that, and others don't have this experience, but he's bringing is a uh, some facts, some uh, uh, experience of what he, he he did according to which situation. So it's uh, I think it's very very uh, useful for the student to to uh, to be in this kind of uh, environment. Yeah. Okay, okay. I think it's also interesting to mention that the program is also located in the city of Le Havre, in our campus in Le Havre. Uh, Nicola, I think it, it's the hub for um, everything that just sticks and supply chain. Yeah, we are we are located in the, in the let's say in front of the port uh, of Le Havre, which is the first port in France in terms of containers traffic. And uh, of course, the students will be able to visit it uh, to uh, visit the terminal, to visit the multiple terminal, to come on board a ship, maybe as we did this year, to to talk with. Uh, um, people that are on board to deal with um, supply and waste and, and everything. So that's very interesting to, to be uh, in contact with the the job position that we are uh, promoting after the school. Mm. Great. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll ask this. Okay. Um, okay, this is, I think this comes a lot. Uh, can the students work <laughs> while they are studying? And if so, for how many hours a week? And what kind of typically jobs uh, can they work? If, if you have any idea, please. Uh, Nicola, you are on mute. 
sorry uh yeah i was just i was just asking moisture to to maybe uh, give some stuff moisture okay. I think that this this course, if I if I understood correctly the question, I think that the course is a full time course, so uh, it's uh, you don't have a lot of time to work during the course, just the apprenticeship uh, uh, program, right? And also, uh, it's a mandatory a four months uh, stage or experience after the the the, the one year course, right, Nicholas? Yeah, yeah, it's. It's both, um, let's say, theoretical and practical program. I think it's uh, for for a full time program. That's I think competitive compared to other other programs in other schools because we we still want to give uh, experience to our students even if they are attending a full time uh, program at school. So challenge, serious games, simulations, uh, business competitions, plus the internship. So they got a, a big, uh, let's say, uh, experience luggage with them where they will enter the professional world. All right. So in, in terms of, uh, there was another question also in terms of living uh, living expenses and accommodation. So living expenses in the city of Le Havre would normally be around 800 euros per month. So this is something that students can already keep in mind when um, considering their finances. Uh, in terms of accommodations, we have a dedicated team called The Hub, which will help you and assist you in finding relevant accommodation around the campus. Uh, as you can see uh, in Laurence's uh, background, you can actually see the campus of Le Havre. Uh, and yeah, <laughs> right there. And uh, we don't have on-campus accommodation. We do have... Um, we do have tie-ups with certain housing uh, organizations where you can find relevant housing right close to the campus. So we have quite a few students. Uh, I know of quite a few Indian students who live walking distance from the campus. Uh, the train station is literally opposite. You have the port. So uh, visually, it's a very beautiful campus also uh, to, to, to see. Uh, but coming to the topic of supply chain and international logistics and port management, it is really at the heart of EM Normandy. It is in its DNA uh, because this started out, the school started out, uh, was, was founded by two cotton traders. And so it is really in uh, the DNA of the school. So this is one of our flagship programs. Um, uh, Nicola and Moestia, there is one question about the assistance provided uh, towards finding jobs for the course. Uh, so what sort of assistance you as professors or the school uh, often? So, yeah, um, all of the students have access to some kind of portal that will give them the list of uh, offers that the school find on the internet or with its own network. Plus, what we can also uh, find uh, as academic directors. For instance, this year I already forwarded, let's say six or seven offers because uh, nowadays the job market is pretty positive for uh, students that are uh, close to graduation because uh, in, in most uh, specifically in the supply chain and transport, uh, because due to all these restrictions, due to these uh, issues in the transport, uh, more people are needed. And uh, yeah, I have already forwarded a lot of offers. And uh, um, I think, for instance, uh, we introduced during my course a company that is manufacturing batteries for cars in France and uh, in Germany. And they said they could take uh, for five people just for this company, if the profile so match, but yeah, according to what they say. So um, yeah, it's not, for now it's not an issue because the job market is very, very uh, open and positive now. So a lot of offers will come from us, from academic directors and also from the school portal. Um, and also the, the students can also search for on its own. And there is no issue in that, but we, we will, push some offers to them. Thanks. While we are in this topic uh, on the uh, jobs, um, if you could advise how many, how many percentage of students get jobs 
uh, and then how much time and what's the typical uh, salary uh, like after after you pass out, please. Yeah, so for the supply chain management track, the employment rate is 93%. Uh, because we have some students that that are uh, switching to other type of jobs or they don't validate some some sometimes the thesis so they are delayed graduation for six months maybe but it's very like uh, one or two percent it's not big. and for the lpm it's uh 100 employment rate and for the salary i gave the example of the 10 years later sixty five thousand euros almost the same in dollars in US dollar and uh, just right after the school, if you stay in Europe, you should expect, uh, but because internship in, in France, for instance, is, uh, is paid around, uh, not so not so much, but maybe uh, 800 euros a month. But then if you stay in the company, you will go uh, maybe between uh, almost 2000 a month, 2000 euros. Okay. Um, there seems to be a question about uh, loans. So we are in the process of tying up with um, a bank uh, in India. Uh, so as soon as the process is done, we can put you in touch with uh, the officers in charge. And normally there are certain rebates, very small rebates that are uh, offered as part of the partnership. But then the entire loan process, the student will have to go through with the bank directly. So that, that's the kind of uh, partnership that we're trying to work on at the moment. Nice. nice. And uh, um, any, any, any uh, would you have a view on the male-female student ratio? That's one of the questions from Vishal. Yeah, we have improved that because um, uh, when I arrived uh, as a professor in 2016, uh, it's almost, it was almost male, but we have improved it. Uh, the ratio uh, this year is, I think it's 38% of women. Yeah. Oh, they give you an idea about that. But it's, yeah, we have, we have many, many, many female, more and more. We want to, to reach the equity, we try. Unfortunately, the audience from C and beyond, we are probably 90-95%. Uh, yeah, so, so for you guys, you will meet some women uh, the, for, in this program. <laughs> it will not be uh, only male. It, 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 it was your question, so yeah, that's my answer. Yeah. Great. Um, just scrolling through the questions, I guess there's one on uh, how about family carriage? Uh, um, uh, as, as per the visa regulations, can the, can a student carry his or her family with them? So under normal circumstances, yes, uh, you can apply for a spousal visa or, or a dependent visa. Um, your your expenses will have to be doubled in that case. So you, you multiply your expenses. So if you say 800 euros for one person, you multiply that by the number of people you take with you. Uh, and normally dependents will not be able to work. So it's a tough decision, I understand. And it's something that um, is not necessarily in our control. And we have to try. It's not impossible. There are families that have gone. Uh, it is. It depends on the visa policies at that point in time. Yeah. I understand. Thank you. And... Uh... Um, is the program uh, um, so I what I understood is and and I think it's written uh, in the background of Ria's uh, uh, the picture you will have campuses uh, one two three four five six campuses so is is this course available through the Dubai campus as well uh, so just a question I think from from one of the participants who said uh the supply chain management track is only available in a half France. The uh, international logistic import management so far is only for the half, but will open in Dubai in 12 months. Uh, when in? In Dubai. Oh, okay. When is it open? Is it, will it open from this year or from the next year? 
it's it's from the first of January two thousand twenty four that we are planning to open it in Dubai. Um, that's only that's all I know. <laughs> but I don't know for which kind of student. I, I don't know. I just uh, designed the program for them. But uh, that's what they told me. They they will open it for the first of January two thousand twenty four. That's the plan. Okay. So essentially, for this year, it's not in Dubai. Uh, yeah, for this year, it's Lahore only. Okay. Um, and I guess I'm not sure whether we had answered this question from Sunil. Uh, DNS plus five years of work experience. Does it qualify for a one year course or the two year course? The, the, the DNS is a. Uh, uh, we'll have to we'll have to check the documents and according to that once we once we see the documents and we'll be able to give you a better idea of the eligibility. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Ria. Noted. Okay. Okay, Vishal's question after pass out 2K euro, that means this course more better for fresher and less experience. Um, so, so Vishal uh, is asking is, is if a person has say about 10 plus years of experience and is looking for mid or senior level roles. Um, um, and I, th I think what he's probably trying to come to is that at, at a mid or senior level, uh, what could be the possible salary that a person with that experience would get. Ah. But what kind of background he, he has? He is a mariner. He's sailed on vessels uh, and say about 10 years experience. Hmm. If he if he work for if he works for a shipping company, of course he won't start at the same salary as a uh, 23 years old uh, student that's for sure so maybe you can uh, consider at least 20 25 30 percent more than this junior uh this 23 years old student that will come out of the school to work in the in the same company not 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 more at the beginning but it will it will follow the different path in terms of salary within the company because they will take into account the age and also the experience before arriving in this company as a uh, two uh, motions calculate the, the, the salary. Right, noted. So uh, essentially, um, I mean, for mariners as well, uh, you you start maybe at a little lower level, but the trajectory that you get uh, will be a lot different and uh, uh, probably a lot more enhanced uh, than a person who has not had the same background and the years of experience. Uh, Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't did not get your question, Romel. Uh, what's your question? If your work experience is more than five years old, what would that be considered? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, that that would be considered. And if you have more than five years of experience, and if you have a degree, you can get a uh, get into a one year course directly. You don't have to sit for the two year course. Now, what exactly I meant is like if that work experience like was in the year two thousand seven to like fourteen. Uh, will that old experience count? That's what I was actually asking. Count for what? Uh, uh, count in? A count like as a not a recent experience, but an old experience like previously. To get admission to get admi course, course or, or for job? To get that uh, one year or two, to, to be considered for the one year or the two year track? Um, it's something that we'll have to we'll have to see once you send us all your documents because then we will need to know what you've been doing also uh, uh, after that. Okay. So from 2014 till date, if you've continued having some sort of work experience, then yeah, we will have to consider all of that. We'll have to take all of that into account uh, when considering your application. Okay. It's a fairly new process, so we will take things as they come. <laughs> All right. Any more questions? I, I just want to mention that uh, in case they, the, the applicants, uh, they would like to get in touch with uh, 
current students because I think it's important because they have our speech. I think they would like to exchange with uh, alumni or current uh, students so they can figure out what is the reality of the program and how it's like uh, being an international student at uh, EM Normandy and all the concerns they may have because of course uh, none of us are international students at EM Normandy but we are very conscious that uh, they ha may have some uh, questions, fears maybe, and so it's good to exchange uh, with someone who has been through the process before from India or from another country. So I think uh, I just want to let you know that uh, we can help you to put, it in, put you in touch with some that kind of people that can help you making your decisions and figure out what's uh, the best solution for you. I think that'll be very helpful, Lawrence. Thank you. So one question from Nisha, we're taking this. Yeah, so uh, this is the question that we get quite often. So basically when applying for your visa, you would need to show at least one year's tuition fees and one year's living expenses. Uh, so you're looking at about uh, seven to 8,000 euros in terms of living expenses. Plus, um, plus about 15,500 if you're taking the one year track or 10,000 euros if you're taking the, the two year track. You show the first year tuition fee. So, yeah. so we, we do have a couple of students who are enrolled right now and uh, we did do the math. And after paying the deposit, it's about, uh, it's about 20 to 23 lakhs that you have to have in hand when applying. Yeah, Indian rupee. Thanks, uh, thanks, Ria. Noted. All right. So, so, so I think we have a. I had summarized the course uh, earlier. Let me summarize now. If you want to apply, right? Uh, what you could do? Um, you could connect with uh, us. Uh, my my colleagues uh, uh, Neha and Tejal are are over here, and we'll share their details as well. Um, you could you know, have an informal chat with us or with the uh, Ria as well. And um, uh, instead of maybe just directly getting uh, uh, writing your application, we can informally tell you seeing your documents uh, that uh, that you could uh, go in for a, a track uh, M1 or an M2 track. Um, so so that's uh, uh, so so that's what we could help you with. Then you can start filling the application. Uh, typically in the application, and this is, uh, I mean, good for a, for a foreign university, you don't have to give English proficiency test. If you have, uh, um, if you have a transcript which shows that your medium of studies was in English, uh, you have to fill in your application, you have to write down your motivation, you need to have recommendation, and then you can uh, submit your application. There's an application fees uh, uh, for submission, but if you are, uh, you know, uh, going through us, there is a fee waiver. Um, uh, the fee is about what, 50 euros? 50 euros. So you get a fee waiver um, and for which Tejal or Neha can help you with. And uh, once you do that, then you, uh, an interview will be taken. And uh, after the interview, you uh, essentially get in, in um, um, whatever I reject or an accept, uh, depending on, on, on how the interview went. And then the process of registration, visas, and all starts off, wherein we all will be able to support you. Just one more thing for those who would like to integrate the final year track directly uh, and who are counting on getting their work experience validated uh, to get into this track, there will probably be an extra step involved. Uh, and that we will communicate to you uh, once you once you submitted your application. Great. And uh, thank you, uh, Lawrence, for, sh uh, you know, uh, showing the video testimonial well, for, for copying the link. And I think that will be of great help. Um, let me take a poll question. And while you answer the poll, maybe, uh, um, Ria, you can answer Nisha's question as well. So I'm just taking the poll on how many of you would be interested for the to attend this course and when uh, those who are interested when would you like to enroll so so the question is on your screen right now and uh, maybe ria you can take the question now done
So uh, as I mentioned, there are two types of scholarship. We uh, we have the early birth scholarship, which is valid till the end of February. So students will automatically benefit from the early birth provided they submit their application before the end of Feb. Uh, and we also have the achievement scholarship, which which is merit based and which will be determined post admission. Uh, we are currently revising the scholarship um, percentages, and so we sh we would be able to get back to you with those details uh, very soon. Um, so we, we were looking at offering um, you know, better and higher scholarships, so we're currently working on a new formula for that. So as soon as we get more information, uh, we will share it with uh, Gaurav, and Gaurav can share it with all of you. Thanks a lot, Ria. And uh, fine, we've got the poll uh, through. And let's have one final uh, question, a uh, uh, poll, which is on feedback of about the webinar. Uh, were your expectations met uh, you, you uh, in the webinar? Was the session useful for you? And how would you rate the session? Uh, if you could answer that and meanwhile we can uh, okay the question from Ro Romelis can send us more info on the edu so we will send it across to you Romel and to everyone else as well we'll send that uh, details to you um, more importantly while you are answering this question if you can also advise of any improvements that you would have wanted uh, from the session it will help us to improve ourselves uh, a lot better in the next webinar as well Okay, I'm closing the poll now. Right then. Uh, so, so I think that that is pretty much it uh, from the uh, about the course. And just uh, before leaving it, uh, the, the webinar I just give you some parting thoughts. Um, the course is uh, uh, say at 16 to 18 lakh Indian rupees, max to max. Uh, you are able to do a world renowned supply chain or a port management course, full time course. Um, uh, similar courses um, around the world or probably in India also um, are available at minimum 50% to 100% more. Um, I, I, cost. Um, the returns on the course is also fairly good, uh, which gives you a, a fairly international perspective, flavor, and jobs as well. So, so that's essentially my key takeaway from the webinar. And what I also see is that a lot of digitization, a lot of uh, um, courses around those have also been plugged in, which uh, probably not all. Um, uh, courses uh, or, or all universities have done that and, and which is the need of the art. So, so that's, that, that's good to know. And we are here uh, uh, if, if you need any help and if you need any clarifications, me or my colleagues can help you uh, with that. Um, like to thank uh, all the presenters over here. Uh, thank you, Nicola. Thank you, Dr. Moshir. Uh, Ria, Lawrence, you've always been of uh, great help and support thank you so much and to all the participants as well you've spent a good one one and a half hour with us um, and i hope it was worth your time and uh, we'll stay in touch thanks everyone thank you so thank much, you very much. Thank, you. thank you bye bye thank you bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye.